everyone, welcome back to the Band of Brothers podcast. I'm Elton, and joining me as always is Mr. Andy Placides. Hello, Mr. McManus. How are you? I'm not bad. Yourself? Uh, yeah, as you know, in the green room, uh, very stressed. But, you know, apart from that, yeah, wicked, man. <laughs> On the plus side, you're not about to drop into uh, the Netherlands. So I, I think, you know... On the whole, it's not too bad. Any other day, apart from 1944, would have been a pretty good day to drop into the Netherlands. I, I can't see any reason I, not I, to I, go there. To, to, to be fair, I think 1941 through 43, you probably want to avoid it as well. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe <laughs> 1960s onwards. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that, that would have just raised a lot of confused questions from people. Yeah, yeah. It's it, Well, it's it generally just to get off my mash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But you know, yeah. oh, okay. Go. I'm gonna to have to just resist the urge to do really bad gold member impressions now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there they could have been a few during this episode, I suppose. Oh, yeah. it's, it, it, the day is still early, there might as well still be. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are here to talk about replacements part four of Band of Brothers. And... If we'd have thought about this, if yeah. we'd thought about this cleverly, we should have had two other people do this cast for us. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. That would have been easier as well. It would have been. We, we wouldn't have had it done it then. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Damn, maybe next time round we'll, we'll do yes, that. Yes, yes, in, in, in 10 years' time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, let's get into it. Uh, first impressions of, of this episode that you have of replacements. How did you find uh, it again this time? Well, again, just, I mean, before we got into the episode, I always remembered enjoying this episode. Um, uh, Bull Randleman's uh, one of my favorite characters. You know, I've, I've always liked him. Um, you know, he's always chomping on a cigar and, you know, uh, cares for his men. So I've, I've always liked that aspect. Um, also, the film um, A Bridge Too Far is one of my favorite war films. And this is dealing with the same operation as that. So that's kind of interesting for me as well. Um, also, this has kind of got a lot of people... I mean, you've got James McAvoy in this episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought you had Paul Rudd from Ant-Man and Chris Barry from Red Dwarf in it. But it turns out it's not them. It's just people that look and sound exactly like them. So. Uh, I didn't think there was Paul Rudd in there, though. No. Oh, I thought, uh, I can't remember what the character's name is at the minute, but there's one guy and, you know, he just looks like Paul Rudd. And I know a lot of other people think this as well, because if you type in Paul Rudd Band of Brothers into Google, the other guy's picture pops up. Because apparently a lot of people think it's him. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I, I, uh, I think the last time I watched Band of Brothers, my last time out, I noticed that uh, James McAvoy was in it. Oh yeah. So that was that was good, and I was expecting to see him this time round as well. So yeah, that was cool. That's I, I just love seeing these that generation of actors coming through. It's, oh yeah, it's it's like the who's who of um, you know, today's Hollywood A-listers. Yeah, this day and you know? yeah, it's like the old Generation X as they were coming through, and then you'd see them in other stuff. And they, oh, hang on, they're the movie stars of today, and that's what's happening now. We we can see the fast benders and the McElvoys. Mm -hmm. uh, we we don't get to see them battling with that their powers this time round, which is a bit <laughs> of a shame, but. I don't know. No, that's a, another tangent that I don't want to go down. I'm mean, just <laughs> thinking of what Mr. X would be doing. Mr. X? Mr. X. Professor, Professor X. X. <laughs> he didn't spend seven years in X medical school for you to call him Mr. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. He's a Mr. to me at the moment. He's nobody at the moment. He's just a replacement. <laughs> he is just, just, just a replacement. What I do find is kind of weird with this episode is the last episode kind of ends just before this but then this kind of does the same ending slightly differently because the replacements are in the very end of the last episode yeah but and they're kind of introduced then but then they're kind of reintroduced at the beginning of this episode mm -hmm. so it's it's a bit like um you know they ended it and then they're redoing it doing a do-over yeah it's like previously on <laughs> yeah, yeah previously on but they used a different take from what was on the screen it's just like i kind of remember this happening differently yeah it's like seeing the the nowadays when you get the well it used to happen all the time anyway but the trailers where you get sucked in and think hang on that it wasn't from that angle it was from a different angle 
I want to see yes. that angle. I want to see the trailer angle. What the hell? So yeah, I bit like bit like Rogue One. <laughs> oh gee, yeah, and all the other films that I've seen that really just wipe me <laughs> out. It just bugs me. It's always bugged me. Always has. Um, one thing I did want to touch on just before we go into it as well. Yes, Blythe. Now we Blythe. said I I didn't see him in the first two episodes, and we had the whole episode about him last week or last yeah. time out. Episode three, yes, yeah. Uh, Karen Tan, wasn't it? But you go into the IMDb, he's clearly in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, he's in there. Uh, and, and we know he's mentioned. It's just this comes back to what I said last time. They don't focus. We, we, we just don't see him. He's just lost. Hmm. I mean, it, it's a bit like, you know, Malarkey and Garnier and Buck and um, Bull and, and, you know, all these other characters, you know, um, Shifty you've had a minute with them to kind of know who they are and get a sense of them. Mm. Whereas Blythe is just like, yeah, just don't remember him it's, at all. It's just not really recognized, is it? It's, it's yeah. such a shame. Mm-hmm. But there we it go. might, it might, it might well have been a film stuff and it just isn't in the final cut. Uh, or it might be that he is just so bland that we just never realized. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a, a bit of a hand from a and a hand from b i suppose little column a a little column b <laughs> yeah why not left out in the trailer again poor old blythe oh well anyway uh should we get on with uh replacements then let us let us do this thing okay well this is all about it centers centers around operation market garden oh yes which is where it was the the operation in uh, Normandy went so well; they decided to do it again over in Holland. Yeah. Now, um, if I'm if I'm saying this incorrectly, then you know, please let me know. By the way, I'm not a military expert, so you can't email in and have a go at me about that. So there we go. Well, I wasn't going to email in anyway. I I just yell at you down the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is Operation Market Garden. Um, uh-huh. This is about the para- uh, Operation. Market was the paratrooper side of things, wasn't it? Yeah. And then Operation Garden was the British tanks, etc., coming through. Yeah. Then uh, the the paratroopers would take all the bridges, secure the bridges, which would let all the tanks through, and then they can get. It's basically their way to Berlin in the quickest route. And... They, they were effectively trying to do to Germany what Germany had done to France at the beginning of the war, which is you kind of bypass the more heavily defended border. Mm. by going up through Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, Operation Market was the airborne side of it, but uh, it wasn't just Americans. There was also the uh, British Airborne was involved in this as well. Um, and Operation Garden, as you say, was uh, kind of a tank mission. But yeah, the, the goal was here was to kind of bypass the uh, heavily defended German lines and to get across the Ruhr to give a, a good foothold into germany mm. uh, and as i mentioned before is featured in the film a bridge too far uh, which is fantastic it has like every hollywood star from the 70s in it wow like, literally everyone <laughs> it's directed by richard attenborough as well oh is it it is really wow oh yes yeah, very good film. in there uh no no richard not david oh okay yeah that's his <laughs> any dinosaurs in there <laughs> Quite possibly, yes. I mean, Edward <laughs> Fox is in there. Does he count? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why it's got, not? It's, it's got Michael Caine in it. He does. I, I have, I've heard it's got Michael Caine and it's got um a Sean Connery. Oh yes, I, I, I believe it has Sean. It has uh, just about everyone who was in uh, British cinema in the nineteen sixties. It's uh, it's a most excellent film. Yeah, I think it, it has a uh, submarine. No, 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 there's no submarines, unfortunately. Although we are showing the film down on deck six by the big multiplex. <laughs> If you want to get this joke, you need to listen to the Black Dog podcast. Yes, definitely. And listen to the Das Boot episode. That's where it's all explained. So yeah, don't listen to the <laughs> don't listen to the, the Hunt for Red October because it's not explained in there. Once you get to Das Boot, yes, then you'll understand that. <laughs> wow. Well, when we say understand, <laughs> you, you'll, you'll get where it started. Understanding is a separate thing altogether. Yeah, that's that. Uh, that uh, requires devotion and maybe at least four years worth of listening to us waffle on on the black dog and, and alcohol lots of alcohol lots and time as yeah. well it is 
it, it, it might well be something that once we once we finish that little journey through um, the adventures of the 501st, we might go back and pull out a few films which kind of tie in. Because I know I want to do Fury at some point because yeah. that's a very good film. Um, a Bridge Too Far would be a great one. There's also uh, The Battle of Britain. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a couple. We we might do a little spin off things afterwards, but let's get through Easy Company before we do that. Okay. <laughs> So this is, uh, as you said, it, it's it's like a previous Leon. Uh, they're in a bar. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, the intro, intro. Oh, nearly forgot the flipping intro again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. Uh, did you recognise any faces in this one? Uh, I recognised uh, Randleman. Oh, okay, uh, it, yeah. It was one of the guys talking in this one. Uh, but I only recognised him because last week out, I'd looked up his... Uh, IMDb page and mm -hmm. there's a picture of how he looked so I was like oh I know who that is um, but yeah uh, they're talking about uh, their replacements not not their replacements but how the people who'd been with the company since um, uh, Kyuhi and jumped through Normandy and everything like that were very very tight and when new people came in although they knew they could do the job then they respected them they didn't want to get close and friendly with them because they were worried they would just die. Yeah, they're, it's the turnover, isn't it? Where uh, yeah. th th their old friends have, have left them. They've been either injured or, or killed. And the replacements come in to fill in that place. And they, they just don't want to get close to them. They don't want to be hurt again. They don't want to, don't want to know their names and where they're from and uh, who they are and what they're going to be after the war. They just, yeah. it, it, you know, they don't have that bond with them. It, it usually have to, it seems like you've got to be bloodied with a person, you know, you've got to go through an operation like this and survive and then you're accepted. Then yeah. you're okay. Then you're allowed in. Yeah. Which I can understand from a certain point of view. It's, it's camaraderie, I suppose, as well. In there. I mean, there's a camaraderie, there's a camaraderie that comes from, you know, going through combat together again, up until the point when you've served with a person, you fought with them. You know, you you haven't you haven't bled with them, so you're not really part of the unit. You know, you're just yeah. kind of assigned to it. I mean, we even see this at the beginning of the episode with um, uh, what's his name? Is it Cobb giving James McAvoy grief for wearing the unit citation? Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. you know, um, you know, you you didn't fight there, so what are you wearing the unit citation for? <laughs> well, that's what I love about all that that pub scene. It is it's all the guys that have fought a couple of times before. And, you know, they're clearly bonded anyway. They've got that, that blood thing going on. And you've got the new guys uh -huh. coming in and just sat around. And I suppose they're trying to mingle and then they're trying to laugh with jokes. But it's like going in. It's, it's a bit, well, I say it's a bit like being the new guy at school, effectively, I suppose, isn't it? You know, you you don't know, you, you don't know the clicks. You don't know who the groups are. You don't know quite how to respond. Yeah. And we still see the guy who kind of bonded with um, Garnier last time is still friendly with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's like, oh, what's going on with your friends? I mean, Garnier goes over and Garnier is kind of being friendly in his own kind of asshole way. You know, that whole kind of going over and talking to them and then like, who said you can laugh? Ah, you, you're OK, you know. Yeah, um, you, you really you know, they, don't they, know where you sit with him, do you? Exactly. Yeah, you know, um, but, you know, he's got a good heart at the end of the day. You know, he's a he's a good guy. But, you know, they're kind of joshing with um, uh, Randleman because uh, I think he's newly promoted to sergeant here. Yeah. So, you know, now he's got his own men under him, his own couple of, um, what do you call it? Uh, his own little squad. Yeah, his little squad. Uh, his, his own little squad. And, you know, all, all the NCOs have got their own, you know, all the sergeants have their little squads. And I suppose there's a little bit of um, competition between them over who's got the best squad. Mm. So, Well, that's uh, what you I also like get... uh, from oh, Garnier, yeah, yeah. Um, the way that he's... He's he's flip flopping between the uh, the emotions of oh yeah yeah he's all right and then he takes the piss out of uh, Randleman and then he, he hang on no you don't get to take the piss out of him he's the best guy on the company he's the most intelligent guy around here you you listen to him and it really yeah. it really builds uh, Randleman up I feel oh yeah it, 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 and again you can see that they respect him. Uh, which is kind of a nice touch there, uh, and and again, you know, um, you know, Garnier is kind of keeping them on their toes, and and you know, deliberately so sort of thing. You know, he's just kind of he he's 
I, th- I think he's kind of opening the door to them, but saying you guys have got to step through it if you want to prove yourselves. You, yeah. you need to, you know, you need to show that you're worthy of being here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean that was all cool. You've also got Buck playing um, Dance with the Guys, and if you remember back in uh, was it Day of Days or Kuhi, you know uh, when he was getting Winters to give him grief about gambling. Yep. You know he's still kind of playing games with the guys, but you know it's it's a lot more friendly now. There's no money involved there, and um, you can see he's he's kind of letting them win, <laughs> and then um, you know a bit of hustling going on there. You go, uh, you're gonna play uh, left-handed all night. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. It's it's pure white men can't jump, isn't it? It really is. Oh, just, absolutely. <laughs> just proper hustling. <laughs> I love it, but it's it's it, once again it's Luz as, as well. It's it's that yeah. little banter that they they know that what they're doing. They know they got this little scam, and oh, yeah, do you know what? Let's let's put these guys in place. <laughs> and the fact that he can actually throw a dart with his left hand. That is just bonkers. It, oh god, yeah, that's you know respect for that. <laughs> yeah, I've I've tried that, and you know, don't stand within 180 degrees of me doing that. Oh, it's the safest place in front of a dartboard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, most probably, yeah, yeah. It, anywhere like a, a man shaped or a, a human shaped uh, silhouette around the dartboard, I won't hit. So you'll be fine. It'll be absolutely I, 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 I can't even throw a dart my right hand, and I'm oh. right-handed, so, you know. <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, you, you touched on it earlier on as well. Uh, Cobb having a little dig. He, he's the only one there who is being a real dick, like legitimately just being a, an arsehole. Uh, and I think that stems from his own inadequacies. You know, he knows he didn't fight in Normandy. Mm. And, okay, in, in his defence, you know, he was wounded on a plane before they jumped. But even so, he it, it, it's the whole thing, you know, uh, the kid will bully the weak kid, so he's not bullied on, you know? Yeah. So he kind of ever, so he's doing that. And then um, I, I just thought it was a really nice way, the way um, uh, Randleman comes over kind of thing with his cigar, picks up the citation James McAvoy left behind and goes, shit, Carb, you didn't find Normandy either. And then just walks, leaves it about and walks off. And then everyone's looking at him and he's like really defensive. Go, like, I wanted in the plane before we jumped, you know? <laughs> He was there. He was taking part in it, and he was. But again, he didn't. He didn't fight he, in Normandy. No. He didn't. He, he, again, you know, to be fair, he it was a DNS. It, yes. It's a bit like he was the McLaren who broke down on the parade lap. You wish. You wish. <laughs> you wish. Um. Yeah. It's. It, yeah. I suppose he's the one. Only one being a dick. Uh. You have Lipton come along as well. Mm-hmm. Who's the new new first sergeant? Well, again, he was he was made first sergeant in the last episode, but again, it seems like we're pretending the end of the last episode didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he says we're all moving out as well, uh-huh. uh, and go for a debriefing. And what I like about this is the the pub goes silent. Oh yeah, absolutely silent, and you can hear people's boots on that wooden floor, and it's just okay. You you can almost hear their collective thoughts working in their head as if to say, okay, right, we're doing it again. We know exactly what we're going into. Yeah. So, yeah, man, that's just pure atmosphere that you can cut with a cricket stump. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, we're introduced to Operation Market Garden then. Uh-huh. Which will be... Uh, we have um, Captain Winters. He's still a captain at this point, isn't he? Yes. Yep. And um, Nixon as well. And Nixon, oh uh, yes, the dynamic duo. Mm. I'd like to see them uh, travelling through time, solving crimes. Yes, no, I, I, I could get that, yeah. Actually, I would like quite like to see them also in a 66 Batman and Robin costume. <laughs> oh, okay, who's Batman, who's Robin? Is it Winters? Oh, Winter, just... Winters has got to be Batman. I mean, just, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, we um we get a nice shot. Are these these are Mustangs that fly over as well, aren't they? Um, yeah, they're a pair of P fifty one D Mustangs right. with the Normandy markings. I actually think the shots actually lifted from Saving Private Ryan. It didn't look like it was there. Yeah, it it it, it was not the best uh CG shot we've seen, if I'm honest. Yeah. 
And did they not, have... not saying it's bad. Again, it's, it's it's a while ago. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's there's lots. P fifty one is quite a common uh, warbird, which is still flying, mm. uh, mostly because uh, people were converting them to racers for years. They used them in the Nevada air racers, yep. and now they're being converted back into uh, warbirds. But yeah, there's a lot of them still flying. I think they have a few up Ducksford as well flying around. Uh, the, well, they used to be one. One of them crashed, but uh, there's still a few kicking around there. Yeah, right. Okay. I don't think I don't think there's a Mustang in residence at Duxford, but they do bring them out for the um, events occasionally. Right. Okay. Uh, I was watching uh, World at War, and mm-hmm. they were showing these Mustangs because they had the rail. I think Pete mentioned this in the uh, Band of Brothers. Uh, sorry, the the Saving Private Ryan episode. Yeah. About the rails and the missiles. The rockets. That, yeah, the rockets that they had on there. Uh-huh. Flipping out, and that's impressive. That oh, is yeah. Really impressive technology that they had there. <laughs> Just, ah, oh, it's, oh, it's awe inspiring, I feel. Just amazing. It's, it's, impress- it's, it's impressive they had that kind of technology at the time. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously the mechanics of it are pretty simple and straightforward, but. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of cool. And again, it's just a nice shot to see the planes flying overhead. You get the sense that, you know, they have air support and uh, things are generally okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so they get uh, told what they're going to be doing. They're going to be dropping in and helping all the, the tanks come through, hopefully meeting up, grabbing all the bridges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they also make a big point of pointing out that it's a British plan by General Montgomery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, quite a few eye rolls at that point as well. Which it was as well, wasn't it? He was, he, I know yeah, uh, he wasn't in charge of the whole operation, was he? He wasn't in charge of the operations because that was uh, Eisenhower. But yeah. the plan, Market Garden, was Montgomery's plan. Ah, right. Okay. Because, well, again, there was there was rivalry between Montgomery and Eisenhower. So I think there would be, though. And that's the same as Americans versus the British. Yeah. Well, again, at this point, you know, the British are having a hard time coming to terms with the fact that the Americans are effectively leading the charge here. Yeah. You know, again, Britain held out on its own for a long time. But, you know, now America's come, you know, the arsenal of freedom. But they've got the men, they've got the machineries. Uh, frankly, they've got the money um, to do this. So they, they, they're they kind of at the tip of the spear. Well, they're, so, they're pushing on as well, though. Oh, yeah. They're being successful in what what is happening. So, Absolutely. So you, you you can't blame America for feeling like the the big boys rolling up, and you can't blame the British for turning around and saying, "Oh no, no, this is our war. Come on, yo, let's we're we're going to be in charge of this." <laughs> as as we do, you know, we all talk like that. We all know that as well. Well, it's quite quite yes, yeah. yes. But we see that our guys getting ready for for jumps. We can see. A bit like in um, uh, at the beginning of Day of Days and everything, you know, they kind of um, they got their bags, uh, the guns in the bags. Um, but now they've done this, they're a bit more experienced. They know that okay, we don't necessarily need this because it's just going to get swept away with the um, second we step out of the plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the leg bag, the good old leg yeah. bag. And mm. I like the way that Bull is uh, he's showing people how to hold it and you know if you land this way then the butt is going to hit you right in the face break your jaw that's it game over thank you very much it's just yeah. just so quick he knows exactly what he's doing he's been there he's now done it and in active duty and it's just a guy to look up to you can see why he's got into that position already and so it's it's once again awe inspiring it's and for the recruits as well to have them guys next to him because I think in the intro there was a recruit there, wasn't there, and saying that you know he had they had really good NCOs to look up to. That was uh, Randleman, actually. Oh, that was Randleman. Yep. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, saying yeah. we had uh, we had we had um, we had good officers for the most part. We had great NCOs. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was Randleman. Oh, okay. I thought that was a recruit, but there we go. No, uh, no. I, I could be wrong, but I'm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was it. Oh, I wish they put their <laughs> names on it, but uh, still not getting any names yet. We'll... No, not yet. No, no. I'll have the tissues ready for when them names come up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need that. Um, but we have a return of a, a oh, good old yes. friend, don't we? 
Did did you hear it in the distance? Did you hear it? Hi ho, silver. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you get you get the old um, Lone Ranger soundtrack playing. <laughs> oh man, yeah, he he comes Sobel comes rocking up, mm-hmm. and he's he's still got that air of superiority around him, isn't he? But he's he's almost he's very nervous around him himself as well. He has to duck behind a truck to prepare himself. You you you, you kind of you kind of get a sense of as he's arriving, he's not quite sure. You know, he he's not prepared to see them necessarily. Mm-hmm. But then he starts seeing the reactions of like Garnier and uh, Vandalman and everyone and Cobb. Um, you know, and, and and they're just like. Oh my God, it's him, and and I think that kind of empowers him. Yeah, yeah, he's got a. I don't know what he's expecting as he rocks up there because there there are no salutes no. until he gets out, and it's almost as if yes, I'm here. You you should all be in awe of me, and the guys aren't because they're they're just getting on with their job. They're getting ready, and they. I I don't know. Do they want to salute? Are they allowed to salute while he's still in the in the jeep or not? Oh yeah, uh, you would. I don't think you necessarily do it in the jeep, but it's more. I think it's no no one knows what's going on there really. Yeah, you know, it's, it, you get you get a sense of Easy's like shit. Is he in charge again now? Is he our new XO or a new uh, cunning officer? You know, they're just not quite sure what to make of it. Um, I, I suppose it's like, you know, you're minding your own business. All of a sudden, that horrible history teacher you had from school so, turns up as your boss at work. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. That would not be good. Mm. Fuck that. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, oh, uh, uh, what's the name of the guy who got um, who came back? I can't remember what his name is. Popeye. Popeye, yeah. Popeye's back. Uh, yep. He escaped from hospital um, and bummed a lift from um, old uh, Sobel. Yeah, well, he was going to get reassigned, wasn't he? If he didn't get back, well, out he was wor- he was he was worried he'd be reassigned. He was worried that if he missed the jump, um, you know, uh, he'd be reassigned to another unit when he was was fit. Mm. So he decided to take matters into his own hands and went off and rejoined. <laughs> you cannot blame him either. Oh so. God, no! You know, it's um, quite quite apparently if if you survive the first two episodes of uh, Band of Brothers, you're also surviving the war pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, he'd be classed as not a, a new re- replacement or recruit or anything like that, but he, he'll be starting again in a different sector, squadron. So. I don't think it'd be so bad with him, though, because, you know, he he has served, he's got history there, you know, he's not out of boot camp. But yeah, it's, he knows where his friends are, he trusts his friends, he's been through basic with them and everything. Mm. You know, they've got that kind of shorthand, and, you know, he that's where he wants to be, so... yeah. But so, yeah, uh, then we have um, Sobel decides to um, test his, to push some buttons, really, by the looks of it. <laughs> with Malarkey. Oh, yeah. Malarkey's kind of like staring at this motorcycle and Sobel just starts giving him shit for no reason. Right. So is is this the bike that they were driving on or riding on last episode? I don't know. I don't. I, I get the feeling it was. I get the feeling, yeah, because that would make a lot of sense if this was actually before that last bit mm-hmm. on the last episode. That would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? it yeah, I, I get the feeling he he nicked it to get back to a pub or his other guys, and so he's just once again puffing out his chest and saying, you know, did you think you're getting away with it? Yeah, I just wonder, I, I, like you say, I, I wonder if they've just, you know, recut these sequences. And that bit from the end of the last episode should have, maybe maybe this should have been at the end of the last episode, and then you cut back to, maybe it was another delay or something, I don't know. But that, that would make a lot more sense, I suppose. Mm, yeah, which but, means, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but basic, basically, Sobel is purely there just to ruffle some feathers and give Malarkey shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Cool. Well, then we move on to September the 17th, 1944. Wait, 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 wait. Not yet, not yet. There's something else you've forgotten. Oh, go on. What, what have I missed out now? Well, we, we've got Lieutenant Brewer uh, insisting that, um, uh, I can't remember what the sergeant's name is off the top of my head, uh, but kick, kick his, tap his leg when the light goes green. And he's oh, like, Oh, that's right. Yes. But, but you'll be standing by the door. And he goes, Yes, but just give me a tap. But, sir, you'll be going, That's an order. Just tap my leg. And it's just like, Why? Yeah, it's another Sobel, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think it's a Sobel, but it's, you know, I, 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 he definitely hasn't. I don't think he's jumped before, at least not in combat. Right. So, you know, he's, he, he's a, the lieutenant is a replacement as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's just crazy. I suppose um, just exercises, jumping is one thing, but going into battle in proper operations is going to be totally different. You're going to have a totally different mindset on that. Well, it's like in uh, Aliens, isn't it? How many jobs for you as this lieutenant? Yeah, 67 simulated. <laughs> two How actual. actual combat drops? Uh, two, including <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I I've totally forgot about that. So we yeah we have it just reminded me of Sobel, but Sobel wasn't like that. I don't think he would he he didn't present himself like that. Well, I don't think Sobel would show weakness like that. Mm. You know, so Sobel would just like be really uncomfortable, but you know he wouldn't he, he wouldn't ask he wouldn't want to put himself in a position where he's got to rely on someone. Yeah, because you know he's. Just not that sort of a person. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we saw him take a jump as well. Yes, but we saw him shit his pants beforehand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is what... What was his name again? Sorry, this this other guy? Uh, Lieutenant Brewer. Brewer, yeah. That it, you can see it already written all over him. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they, they all make it to Holland anyway. And... Oh, yes, they do. You have a, a cut scene of all the parachutes coming down now someone cuts a piece of their cloth off mm -hmm. which goes back to the is it day of days i think it's day of days where malarkey had the uh the nazi flag and we were wondering is that the poncho they found a poncho a german poncho that was yeah i think it's just silk from the parachutes Yes, because so, the parachutes are camo. Yeah, which I didn't realise. A long shot, they don't look camo. Getting no. close together. The, the, reserve, the, the reserve shoots are um, uh, normal. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the guy I thought was Paul Rudd, but it's not Paul Rudd. Right. Um, uh, cutting the uh, the parachute section. Um, who's he playing? He was playing Webster. That was it. Right. So that clears that up now. That that was yes. just a, a slice of a parachute either for nostalgia, posterity, or just for shits and giggles to wipe I think it's off. a bit like how, if you recall, in um, Saving Private Ryan, you had uh, the sergeant who was collecting the uh, sand from everywhere he went to. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, maybe this guy's thing is every parachute he jumps with. Yeah. I I can totally see why, because that, that is a representation of a safe jump as well. Yeah into combat that's a safe jump into combat thank you very much i'll have a piece of that yeah and plus then if the germans find it they can't use that because <laughs> there's a, a big square cut out of it yes yes exactly <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stop those germans stealing my parachute -ha -ha -ha. yeah that'll learn them <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh what is this oh we, uh, we just roll it up uh, we, there's a hole in my parachute <laughs> <laughs> there's a hole shaped like long johns what <laughs> <laughs> oh excellent <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah they they all land in um the fields and it is a glorious shot of all the it's a, it's a great shot down. again you got randleman going through kind of like um being a bit like mother you know kind of like you got the one guy struggling get, to get his harness off and he kind of unclips it and pulls it down and like you know um Licks the handkerchief and rubs his cheek and then runs on. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Don't say sorry. 
<laughs> he's very um, Hannibal, isn't he, from the A-Team? Oh, it's the cigar, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just so cool. Just makes me want to take up cigars just for the sake of just sticking one in my mouth. It's, you just bite it, it's for the look. <laughs> yeah, don't light it, like Will Smith. <laughs> yes, one, one must get jiggy with it. Oh, do, do you know, when we first started the Band of Brothers podcast, I didn't think Will Smith and getting jiggy with it would ever come up, but now it has. Oh, well, I was going to say, that shows how much you knew. <laughs> yeah, I, I was not expecting that. That's that's just brilliant. You're so, welcome. Got, well, where are we now? We walk through a field, don't we? we uh... Oh, we're not kind of advancing up through a trench. Um, I mean, I think you've got Cobb um, comes up with... Uh, Alcohol. Is it Cobb? I think it's Cobb. Uh, he's found beer just lying outside of a farm somewhere. Mm. As you know, why wouldn't you? Um, you also see a load of um, aircraft flying back. Uh, we've been bombing up ahead. And they just say, well, there goes our air support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On its way home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're walking through a field. They see a lady open the windows. On a mm -hmm. on a house, and it's it is just a, a a normal field, but then they they hit the the mud and the where the field has been ploughed, and they can see that the uh, the lady's hanging out a big orange sheet, should we say? I don't mm -hmm. think they they have flags are us around there at that time, so it must. Well, just no, be an I mean sheet. I I would have thought it would be an orange flag because a why would you have an orange sheet? It just seems silly. Uh, and orange is a national colour of benevolence. Yeah. So, you know, it, it would make sense. They've got something like that tucked away. <laughs> all right. All right, then. OK, fine. It's the flag. Everyone's got this big orange flag. Brilliant. Well, I'm sorry. When was the last time you saw someone with bright orange sheets? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> right. I'm going to go buy some just to prove you wrong. Oh, OK, OK, then. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, that's weird. I'm not going to show you my sheets because that's that's just weird. That yeah, it's happen. true. A at least not until you washed them. Yeah. <laughs> so they're they're hanging these sheets out. And this is just symbolising. Sounds like a euphemism. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I say sounds like a euphemism nowadays. It's just crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. This orange flag. This is just representing freedom or removal of the Germans, and we're safe and welcome. Well, I think it's it, it, it's it's just. It's it's like the French were hanging out the uh, the tricolor, you know. Once the Germans had left, it was defiance. It's like, yeah, fuck you. We can we can have our own national identity now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good sight, and you have that lovely shot of Randleman looking through the the fence uh, up at this uh, sheet, and everyone mm -hmm. knows exactly what that means. And it's just we move on to uh, Eindhoven. Yep, in Holland, and. The mother of all street parties is going on. Oh yeah, um, it, it would seem they're rather happy to um, to have the Americans there. So there's uh, celebrations, there's alcohol, there's cheers, there's women, there's wine, there's food. Well, there's a few things going on. I really want to uh, talk about this scene. Sure, sure. We we can see the joy going on between. All the, the commoners and the, the military that are turning up. And because I know what's going to be happening later on, that they're, they're happy now. They're not going to be happy later on. We we all know that. But mm -hmm. you, you have joy. You can see children and families and wives and mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers all there, just all celebrating. And you know, saying good riddance to the the Nazis and the Germans. Oh yes. And there's there's lots of snogging going on, as you you might well expect. Lots of people coming up and kissing just the soldiers. Winters gets one as well. Oh yeah, and that's, Nixon. <laughs> yeah, and Nixon. It's just a sneak one, and it's just yeah, they're just accepting it. And but them two are just still on the ball. Still, they're on the ball, and again, they're both. Um tucking their collars up to hide their um, officer bars. Yes. Yeah. Just in case. Oh, yes. Yeah. Which is very clever in itself, I, I feel. Uh, right. There's a, a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, the Sure. 
the women in here. Now, uh -huh. there are, uh, I know this is true and this is what happens to the, the women that were there. Th these are the, the ones that are getting grabbed and stripped and having their hair cut. They're the ones that were, uh, how, how do you put it? Not not just canoodling with the Germans. Oh, but the, but... The, 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 uh, the, uh, the resistance guy says they were collaborating. Yeah. So, <clears throat> right, okay. They're collaborating, but are they doing it for an easy life or are they actually feeding them information or what? You know, I suppose there's 50 shades of all that different color, really, isn't there? But... Well, I, I, I think to a certain extent, uh, you know, it, it might just be they just fell in love with someone again. Yeah. You know, not not every German was a bloody um, Nazi carrying SS carrying car member. Yeah. You know, some of them are just German soldiers fighting for their country. We saw this actually in ba uh, uh, Das Boot with the um, with a lieutenant and his uh, French mistress. Yep. And, you know, again, you know, she's terrified that if the French resistance finds out about her, they'll kill her and their baby. Yeah. So, yeah, it, again, you know, war is never, never, ever black and white. And I definitely get the impression it's not just about if they were actually collaborating. Mm. It's just they slept with a German or something like that. And, you know, it's, it's again, the, the, it, it, it swung all the other way. You've gone from, you know, maybe they did get an easy life because of it, or maybe it was perceived to be that case. But now but the Germans are gone. Well, we're going to fuck your shit up. It could be a case of protecting their family as well, because if you're with a soldier and you're known to be with a soldier, they could go easier on that family. So it, it could have, it, they might know the repercussions that they might get later on, but at that moment, they're just looking after their families and think, well, hang on, this is the easy way of looking after everyone at the moment. So there's mm -hmm. a, there's, there are lots of, Different shades of orange in this, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it is grim, and World at War has it clear to see that this did happen. And oh yeah, this this this, this absolutely happened. Mm. Um, you know, both in France and the Netherlands. Um, you know, I think any of the occupied territories, uh, it would have happened in. Yeah. Um, I mean, we even, and again, you even see uh, a little bit later on in this when you've got the woman by the side of a road with the baby. Yeah. You know, and she's, you know, pretty destitute, hair all shaved off, you know, with a baby. And again, you know, for all we know, her only crime was falling in love. Yeah. Because yeah. again, you know, it's, um, you know, uh, the Netherlands shares a border with Germany. You know, the, the languages are, are, are relatively similar. Uh, they're not a million miles away culturally either. Mm. But... There you go. Yeah, it's just you take your breaks when you get them. Oh yes. Uh, we have uh, per I can never pronounce his name. Percote, Perconte, Perconte. I yeah. think that's it. Motorboating, <laughs> <laughs> and his face when he gets dragged off as well. That's just just genius. It's proper little schoolboy, <laughs> isn't it? It's like whoa. But Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun here. That was just, just genius. I love it. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. Um, and we get the meeting of Winters and the Resistance as well. Uh huh. And yep. The in introduction of children and working uh, for the Resistance, and mm -hmm. they're just sat there going, "Well, hang on, they're kids. We they can't rely on kids, but." They're they're probably the main front of the resistance because they can get anywhere. They're not going to get shot just for you know, being around anywhere. And they <laughs> they're, they're the little whispers, aren't they? Oh, it's like uh, what's his name, um, Fagin out of Oliver Twist. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, or uh, what else? More modern pop culture, Game of Thrones, and varies. oh yes, my little my, my little um my little birds. Yes, my little birds. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's, I think it's brilliant. And I, I love the way the Winters and Nixon come together and, okay, they just decide, yeah, this is the the only way to go forward. But mm -hmm. the, the tanks that are coming through, are these the British tanks that are coming through? Uh, well, I mean, 
Uh, the first tank is definitely a Sherman tank. I think the second one is supposed to be a Churchill. Right. Um, the f- I think it's supposed to be the British tanks, and the British did operate Shermans. But I'm pretty sure that the second Churchill has a US star on the top of it. Right. Well, there's um, a, a Jeep leading it as well. Yeah, well, again, the British used the Jeeps, so that in of itself isn't anything untoward. Uh, hang on, let me just see if I can find a quick screen grab of it. Um, yeah, the, the Churchill has a US star on the top of it. Ah, oh, okay. But it's got a British, uh, a British commander. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, Montgomery turned around and said, no, 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 we're commandeering that one, and we'll put a British man in there, and he'll lead it. Because that's yes. what we do. Yes, quite. Yes, yes, terribly. Firefly, what, what? Yeah. So, but yeah, they're, they're British. Uh, it's British officers on those tanks. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else about that sort of scene that you want to talk about on there? Uh, not especially. I, I suppose other than, you know, this is... Scenes like this were played out in France and in Paris when we got there. I don't think they're in Paris at this point of the war. Um but it, it, this is kind of the only real time we see um, everyone being really grateful for the, the Americans and the Allies are there, mm. just in Band of Brothers anyway. So it's kind of nice to just see that little snippet. Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, Winters decides that we're going to be using the resistance and the kids for the reports. Uh-huh. Uh, then it moves on later on during the, the night. Uh it's recruitments again. This is the the guy that wanted to be tapped before he jumped out of the plane. Yes, uh, Brewer, Let- Lieutenant Brewer, who is um, he's he's not the CEO of Easy because that's Winters, but he is the um, platoon commander. Yeah. So he is what Winters was at the very beginning. And they're trying to dig in somewhere. This is an, another little t- uh, village town on the outskirts of. Uh, I think it's just somewhere on the outskirts of there. Yeah, they just went to secure the perimeter. So they just, you know, it's probably just a farm somewhere out there. Yeah. They they bump along a father and son, swap chocolates and other stuff, and the kid's face lights up when he gets <laughs> chocolate. It, it's just like an advert, really, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what the actor's name is, but the guy in it's been in um, uh, other stuff as well. I, I recognise his face, but... I don't right. know. I think it was, it was in Stargate, maybe, or something like that. But, oh, I yeah. wouldn't know it from that. Ah, well, yes. Never got round to that. And never probably mind. never will, either. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what happens next, then? We're, we're on the way to uh, uh, Noinon? Uh, Nijmegen, isn't it? I, I can't remember. Nijmegen? Uh, hang about, let me have a look. The place uh, where Vincent Van Gogh, uh, Van, Vincent Van Gogh is born. Uh, born. Oh yes, well I, I don't know where that is, but they're going there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, they're riding along on the uh, British tanks. Ah oh, yes, okay. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong. Just driving, it's like when they went up to. Uh, the village last uh, last episode out, uh, Caratan. Yeah, and they're just walking up the road. Once again, <laughs> they're just going up the road, as if they're not going to cover the road or have eyes on the road. Well, again, you got to bear in mind they've been told that uh, it's only uh, old men and children defending the Netherlands. You know, all the hard troops are further down in Germany and France. Mm. They've just been welcomed like liberating heroes through um, Eindhoven. You know, no one really, you know, they've not encountered any resistance. The uh, the jump has been largely unopposed. You know, at this point, they're like, oh, well, we're just going through the motions. Well, I think from what I've read on the uh, the actual jump itself, they were supposed to secure bridges and work their way across and stop Germans from getting time to, to gather their forces and retaliate. And I think this is what's happened here. They, they've they had time and they've, yeah. they haven't been as successful as what they thought they would be. Uh, the, the, uh, the paratroopers in securing absolutely everything. And, and you're not because it's such a vast area to, to cover. 
in such a short amount of time. And so the Germans have built up a force. Uh, I think, again, the reports of it being old men and children was wrong from the start. Um, there, there was a lot of intelligent failures here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, overconfidence, because again, everything from Normandy had been going pretty smooth, you know. I mean, this was taking place in September. Yep. So Normandy was so June, July, August. It's all been coming up, you know, roses for them effectively. Yeah. You know, they're pushing back the Germans, you know, they pushed through to France. Um, and they, I mean, this was a, literally, they didn't have to do this. This was like, if we do this, we can end the war in the next three months. Yeah, they were looking to end it by Christmas, weren't they? All right. It's always Christmas with these guys, you know, always yeah. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it gives them a, a nice focal point, doesn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, you know, it's that whole, you know, get get home for the uh, for the turkey dinner. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what everyone's thinking about. You give them a focal point and it's something to strive for. Okay, brilliant. We can all end it by Christmas. Everyone can be happy for Christmas. Excellent. <laughs> we can actually, you know, hand out chocolate bars to our families and friends. It's, I, th- I feel that, that that is a good focal point to, to adopt. But I think maybe they're a little bit naive in thinking, okay, yeah, we can get this done by then. All, all, all I'd say at this point is they've done one and a half world wars in which every year it'll be over by Christmas. Yeah. Because, okay, maybe it's a good focal point, but because of that, it's always the focal point. It's always... Uh, we'll try and have this done by Christmas. Hmm. Okay, we'll try and have it done by next Christmas. <laughs> okay, we'll try and have it done by the next Christmas. Yeah. Oh, shit, we finished it in May. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Damn, can we just carry on for a little bit longer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll stop, but have like a little uh, peace treaty where we we won't officially end it until Christmas Eve. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we're heading up a road and... One of the uh, lieutenants jumps off and walks ahead. It's uh, Lieutenant Brewer again, yep. our uh, platoon commander. Uh, but one of them remarks doing something awfully um, pattern-like. Yeah. Uh, General uh, George C. Patton. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of walking out in front. He's like, uh, uh, and obviously, you know, he's new. Whereas um, the older hand are like. Uh, it's probably not a good idea, Lieutenant. You should probably, you know, come back away from being exposed. And as soon as he turns around, he goes, you what? He gets shot. Well, he's he's, he's gone to look closer with binoculars. 20 metres up ahead? <laughs> You're not going to get a better look. It's not going to nah. make that much of a difference. And so it is a bit of a schoolboy error and he cops one in the throat whereas oh yes everyone else drops into position and the tracks uh the tanks start moving around we also well, get the half tra- they, 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 they see the half track and at that point it's like you know contact and it's just like get off the tanks yeah shit goes down here it He's... goes down real quick i mean this is all really well done this whole sequence yeah it's brilliant this ain't um Old men and children. <laughs> oh God, no! You know this is this is this is not. I mean, and while this is all going, you know, you've got the lieutenant up front. You know, he's got blood pouring from his artery where he's shot. And Randleman's run up and he's like, "Medic up front, medic up front." You know. Yeah, and then the medic goes up there. Everyone else gets yeah. down. Everyone's on the the bank of the, yeah. the road. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, the medic gets it as well. Well, you've got all the guys in the uh, the ditch and all kind of like cowering there. And Randleman's going, move, move, move. Mm. Like um, Winters did in, um, uh, was it Day of Days or Cowan Town? It's Day of Days. Ca- uh, you know, he's like, both, both really. But, but you know, he, he's like, you know, you're, you're sitting targets if you're in the ditch sort of thing. And the new the new recruits effectively are just kind of frozen there. Yeah. And they see the medic get shot and they're still frozen. And then, you know, the ball gets down there and has to like, literally start pulling these guys and say, you know, you're a sitting target. Move, move. Get into, um, get into the town. Yeah. the The tank takes out the half track in this, is it? Oh yeah, the tank shoots the half track, and uh, all the Germans, you know, catch fire and are pouring out. 
And again, you have easy company shooting them as they run by. Nice. Fish in a barrel. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. But I love the way that they deploy because they head into the village now. Uh huh. I love the way that they deploy through this. I think it is just shot so well. It's Oh yeah, I mean they they got some really cool techniques again. When you when they see them looking at the lieutenant, it's kinda of like very uh juddery slow motion. Mm-hmm. You know, that sense of, you know, everything's kinda of high frame right there. But then again, they're kind of charging in, taking cover behind buildings, uh, behind low walls. Yeah. You feel crouched when you're doing it as well. I'll tell you something else as well. It's probably the first show which knows the difference between cover and concealment. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Well, co- cover is you're safe from enemy fire. Concealment is they can't see you. Mm. And obviously these guys are in concealment because... You're not safe from the enemy fire. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just love the way they disperse and silently as well. They're all uh-huh. being silent. They're moving. They're tapping each other. They're they're working their way. Hand signals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some are trying to jump over fences and just end up taking down the fence. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that was like something out of a hot fuzz, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, then they come across one of the hidden tanks. Well, I quite liked as well while they're deploying, you've got the tanks kind of also deploying into the town as well. Yeah. You know, moving around. Um, but yeah, then you have um, you know, Randleman sees um, uh, the tiger tank and other sergeant whose name I can't remember and I've not been able to remember this entire episode. So sorry about that. But him, <laughs> uh, they go back to um, to tell, not Chris Barry, um, that there's a tiger tank hiding behind a building. Oh, that's and if you Martin, just shoot down the building. Is it Martin? There you go. Fine. Yeah. Dexter Fletcher. Um, yeah. Uh, he said, look, if you just shoot through the building, you'll see the tank. Mm. But not Chris Barry says, uh, well, my orders are for no unnecessary property damage. So I can't. And these guys are all like, but tank <laughs> building. You see our problem here. <laughs> <laughs> but it, he's going back to the, the British accent as well. Because oh, he's so... He, he's all, all, all he's missing is a monocle. I, I can't shoot something that's not there. If I can't see ice, it, I can't ice, shoot ice. it. I said good day, sir. <laughs> Would you please remove yourself from my tank? You are dirty in it. Yes. I, I do feel there was a certain sense of invulnerability as well in the tank because at this point, certainly in Band of Brothers, when the tanks show up, the good guys win. Yeah, simple as that. You know, every time we've seen it, be it at uh, uh, in in Normandy, in Caritan, every time the tanks, you know, you're invulnerable at that point. So you got the sense that with this tank goes, I don't need to worry about no beastly Germans. I have a tank, sir. Yeah. Good yes. day to you, sir. And I, I shall I not... I said good day, sir. I shall not indulge in your flip-flams anymore. Yes. I cannot your see this flam. tank, so I shall not shoot at this tank. Yes. So they don't so shoot. Yes, uh, they don't, well, they don't shoot through the, through the building. Um, and they carry on. And it's, it's that great moment, you know, it's, it's almost a comedy thing where he's... Again, the guy in the tank looking through the binoculars... And he sees the tank and he takes the binoculars down just as it fires. Oh, um, yeah. But he misses the first tank. It shoots the second one. I and mean, then it's just like, advance forward, traverse right. And then he gets blown up as well. <laughs> the, the, Meanwhile, Easy's like going, fall back. <laughs> they're, they're both taken Run out. Run away. <laughs> both taken out in, what, single shots, really? Pretty much, yeah. One shot kills on both the... Um, first two british tanks yeah i love the way that this tank is hidden itself though it's got hay all over or straw all over it yeah and it it's how i would hide a tank oh yeah <laughs> it's just it's just got a no you see straw I, hat I, I, I'd, I'd hide it like the uh the tank killer which you didn't even see at all it's just like it comes from the building it's like surprise motherfucker mm, yeah yeah that yeah <laughs> yeah I, I cannot argue with that it's like all of a sudden this is like shit. Uh, yeah, it it all goes to shit very quickly. 
And then you've got uh, the machine guns open fire, both on the top of a building and windows and everything. And it's just like, well, gee, you know, it's a shame no one told the Germans about unnecessary property damage. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because they're perched up on top of the building, just laying it down. Oh, yeah. Um, and Yeah, you, you've got, um, you know, again, Ball kind of hides behind the tank and everything. I mean, you've got... Um, so, again, it just starts mowing people down. It was just a, a bit of a bloodbath, wasn't it? Fish in a barrel. Yeah. Someone jumps through a, 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 a hedge and because there's a ditch on the other side of the hedge. Yeah. And... Well, he goes, follow me through, and he kind of goes low, and then the second guy just kind of stands there and just gets pelted with machine gun fire. Which is what we've seen before. If I suppose it's a case of, okay, right, there's one man running. There's going to be another man running very soon. We had that going into Caratan with uh, one of the guys round the side and yeah. he, he got out of it. The second man got pegged and this is what happens through this, this uh, hedge. He goes through oh, and yeah. then someone else gets pegged behind it. W- was this McAvoy? This wasn't McAvoy getting done there though. Was no, it? this was no, this wasn't McAvoy. No, but I think it was one of the new guys. Right. Okay. So then they start falling back. They get, get the shout to fall back. Uh, one of the, Cobb, he's he's a fucking lucky bastard, man. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. So th- this is mortars now, isn't it? Uh, they've opened up with mortar fire, yeah. And uh, yeah, Cobb nearly catches one in the helmet. Uh, yeah, he nearly gets shot. Uh, you've also got um, Ball trying to run for cover. Mm. Um, and uh. As he's running for cover, the tank gets hit and shrapnel lands in him, wounding him. Mm-hmm. And then you've got him trying to crawl along this um, ditch while the, uh, the now driverless, crewless tank is still kind of creeping towards them. And it's, it's just like the most clenching moment ever where this tank's just coming at walking speed, what have you. Uh, but because he's wounded, he can't get out of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, he, obviously from the alien Prometheus school of... Um, Running away from a falling object. <laughs> it's, it's running away very slowly. It's a case of you're sat there going, just stop crawling. It'll bypass <laughs> you. It'll go in front of you. Don't worry about it. But it's it, it's a case of, okay, there's a zombie walking after me. But when you <laughs> put them on fire, they're even more dangerous. And this driverless tank, which is now on fire as well, is heading slowly towards a wounded soldier. Yes. And you just can't help but I, I nearly crawled away. I was sat there <laughs> on the floor just watching this going, I want to crawl away as well. It's making me oh, uncomfortable I... watching this. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It, 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 it was, like I said, it was just clenched with it. And it keeps cutting back to him. Um, it, it, it almost reminds me of that bit in Austin Powers, you know, when they're on the, um, the, uh, the big roller and it goes like no and it's just coming close towards him and he's going get out of the way and he just keeps going and going and going and he gets one over it's just like that <laughs> okay um uh, they've uh randleman's been left there then uh well we don't see what happens so we, ju- we just see that you know they're they're falling back um at speed yeah um uh, while they're falling back, you see the uh, the other two new guys jump into a foxhole, um, and uh, you've got um, James McAvoy's character uh, Miller. Uh, Miller Miller's lying there with a hole in his head. Yep, uh, which is kind of quite gruesome. Um, again, the call comes through to fall back, so everyone's just running for running for it. Uh, you know, the surviving tanks trying to get away gets shot. Um, Buck, you also see. Uh, uh, Buck gets shot in the ass, um, and he's like, uh, "Just leave me, leave me!" And they're like, "Come help me!" And they go and knock down a door and um, load him onto that and start dragging him away. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, effectively, Easy Company has to go with its tail between its legs. Uh, there's a couple of tanks on the ridgeway, kind of holding position, opening fire. A couple of trucks behind that. Yeah. And yeah, um, you've with, got a moment then with Buck. Um, oh yeah. Uh, he, he's on the door and I think they're looking at him and uh, one of the, the guys turned around and said, oh, look, look, one bullet, four holes. So this bullet has gone in one cheek 
out the other cheek, uh, out the other side of that cheek, into the other cheek, and then out the other side. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's gonna suck. Yeah, man. That is that's just not good. <laughs> no. But yeah, you um they're falling back. Uh the town's, you know, you know, it's on fire, you know, it it, it belongs to the Germans. We have Winters and Nixon there kind of like going, How bad is it? I don't know yet. And then uh, Nixon gets shot. Oh yes. It, I'd forgotten it, about that. That really yeah. that was a proper jump scare, that was. Well, I thought it was Winters got shot. I'd forgotten it was Nixon. Um, but yeah, it's a proper jump scare. Um, and he's like, uh, "Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Am I okay? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Stop looking at me like that." <laughs> well, yeah, he's going to be in shock from it, isn't he? It's and it's not even well, a ricochet, it, it, is it? No, it went it went clean through the helmet. Yeah. You can see the graze across his head. But yeah, it was a lucky son of a bitch. But. <laughs> It, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just see all of Easy Company now on the trucks and, you know, it's their first real defeat. And, you know, everyone's like bloody hands and just like a bit of shell shot, you know, they're just, they're, again, they're just not used to this. No. Well, there's people asking about Randleman. Uh, uh, Dexter they, they, uh, Lipton tells them they've got uh, four dead, 11, casual, uh, 11 wounded. Yep. And it just fall back, isn't it? It's, it is, yeah. They're not used to this. It's run away, run away. You yeah. see Cobb's quite um, distraught by it all, by the looks of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, you definitely get a sense that there's no longer any replacements and originals. Now they're all just easy company. Yeah, they're, they've uh, bonded under fire, shall we say. That is it. Yeah. That they, they've all mucked in. They've all gone through the same sort of thing. And they've all tasted defeat at the same time as well. It's the, it's the old saying, there are no atheists in a foxhole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too right. So we go into a bit of a lull now. Oh, yes. We, we, we've got the uh, the earth belonged to the Martians moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I'm so glad you're doing this. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, Bull is in a barn. <laughs> oh, actually, no, no, before we get to the barn. Before we get to the barn, you, you, you've got this shot of the Germans now coming through the town past the flaming tanks and everything. That's you know. right, yeah, they're spreading uh, out. And, you know, they're, they're, again, you get this sense that the Germans are victorious. Like I said, the earth belonged to the Martians. Mm. You know, that sort of a vibe sort of thing going. But then the camera kind of pans down to this little ditch and you kind of just see Bull creeping along and he's kind of like hunkered down there, hidden away with his rifle. It's just like, yep. I'm in shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, because he's in a he's in a um, I don't want to say a sewage, a drain. but it is a drain, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a drain or something. Yeah, and he's just kind of like just uh, I I I kind of don't. I mean, obviously he came there so we could see him, but it's like why 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 come here where you're more visible? Stay yeah. in the middle where you were invisible. Yeah, couldn't see you back there. Can see you yeah. now. Yeah, but you got the flames of a, a burning tank in the background as well. I'm yeah. just assuming that that is an American tank in the background. Yeah, it's it's the tank that uh, was chasing him. Yeah. So yeah, he's yeah he's in shit streak, right? But he, he's up a gum tree without a paddle. I do he believe is. the saying is S- something along those lines. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he makes his way to a, a barn. Uh huh. Oh, you do get a very cool shot straight after that though of the ammunition cooking off in that tank. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. You, you 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 just see the tank, and you know it's just because it's been burning. The ammunition is now kind of catching fire mm. and uh, exploding. Uh, but yeah, he's now moved from his hidey hole into the barn, sorting himself out, trying to be as quiet as he, as he can. Oh yeah, uh, they have uh, little rations in the the stock of their guns as well. See, for the longest time, I thought that was a cigar. Right. Well, yeah, that could make sense as well. Yeah, but obviously he chews it. I'm like, going, well, I know he's hard, but, you know, you wouldn't chew a cigar, would you? <laughs> well, it's Randleman. He's, he's fucking nails. It's true. I'm surprised he didn't take a bite out of the stock itself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know it's in there somewhere. Let's just eat the stock. <laughs> yeah. 
It's made of chocolate. <laughs> Uh, but um, we have a family, or not a family, but a, a father and daughter. Just yeah, I think it's the really farmer in. who owns the barn kind of comes in and uh, gets a knife to his throat. Yeah, and then the daughter shows up, and, and this whole sequence is really well done because there's like almost no dialogue because you know they don't speak English and he doesn't speak Dutch, mm. um, and it's all done through kind of like gesturing and grunting and uh, you know stuff like that. It all, almost reminded me of something out of King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I haven't seen that yet, so. Um... Oh no, 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 I'm not talking about the new one. I'm just saying, you know, the, the 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 traditional story of a monkey making friends with people. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, the the Tarzan story as well. Yes, that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hadn't really grasped that. I suppose. Yeah, it is very silent. I just thought it was silent because it was meant to be silent. He didn't want to be drawing too much attention to anything going on but yeah i suppose there is that language barrier as well Uh that goes along with that uh you still have germans spreading out as well they're they are the the kingpings in the town at the moment uh we don't see those just yet though because we first we go back to easy company um and one of them's remarking about how um one of the fallen never fired his gun at all and yeah they're just asking you know do you know anything what's going on and everything uh, know anything about Bull? And then someone mentions that uh, Lieutenant Brewer's going to make it, and they go, "That's impossible." And he's going, "Goes well, he's going to make it." And they go, "Well, maybe if he turned his head at just the right moment." But mm. it, again, it's just this kind of weird. They're, they're all almost kind of in shock, you know. Uh, especially uh, Bull's guys from his squad. You know, they're like, you know, they're just not quite sure what to do. They're a bit leaderless. Yeah, they are. They're they're very rudderless, aren't they? They yeah, they're just left. Okay, they they're told what to do, and they haven't been in this situation where we take the initiative to go out and do anything with that. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, it's it's building just, these people up as well. It's 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 kind of showing, you know, certainly them and Cobb coming together as well, because Cobb's in their company, mm. uh, in in their uh, squad. Uh, and again, you know, up until this point, they've not really been together. Um, but then we go back to the barn, and you know, again, he's got the knife to the farmer's throat, but you know, he kind of potentially relents and lets them go. Um, and that's when the farmer kind of tries to help him with his wound you know yeah Um, that looks grim as well because he's uh, just digging around with his fingers well it's he kind of he kind of tears open his shirt and it it just looks grim in the light and everything like that i mean he's trying to pull up this thing and you know he's going just pull it out and the guy says something in dutch you know oh there's the bit where he pours the alcohol on from his flask yeah and ball just goes oh and he goes you want some and he just goes no and he just drinks it himself it's like there you go yeah i'm gonna need it anyway <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, i need a bit of a drink after this but he's like yeah he can't get anything so he just pulls out his bayonet and gives it to the farmer it's like oh <laughs> yeah i mean again that just kind of shows how hard as nails this guy is he's just like yeah just just cut it the fuck out he, he's just rambo isn't he he really is just do you know what let's, let's put a bit of gunpowder in there set it ablaze there we go yeah <laughs> it, it also reminded me of that scene in Black Hawk Down where they're trying to get the artery. Do you remember yeah. that? Uh-huh. And it's just, oh, that just makes me wince every single yeah. time that does. Had slightly better results this time, though, it must be said. <laughs> yeah, but that is just, it. oh, it, it's just a gruesome scene. It's, it's unnerving. It, the, the scenes are different. But it just reminded me of that when when you saw him digging out when the fingers go in there to try and dig it out yeah. first off. It's oh, what the fuck are you doing, <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's <laughs> like when he holds out this bit of metal, though. It's like souvenir. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, I'm all right. I'd be like, no, um, thank you very much. I'm pocketing that. Yeah, sod the person but that's who's when... cutting the parachutes yeah. up. I'll have a bit of shrapnel that's gone into my shoulder blade. Yeah, but that's when the Germans show up again, and all of a sudden you got a half track full of um, Jerry shows up, mm. um, and yeah, and that's when oh dear. <laughs> so this guy walks in. He's just to take a piss, really, and have a little nose around. Uh huh. And 
just so happens at that time you have these are the Germans heading to Eindhoven to, yeah. to bomb Eindhoven. And it just so happens they fly over at exactly the right time. I don't think it was Germans. I think it was the Allies. I thought it was the Germans going over to, to Eindhoven. Not entirely sure. I'll have to see if I can find that. But I, you see, the Germans, I don't think at this point they really had the ability to do any bombing. Uh, they they were largely down to just um, fighter defense. Right. Uh, I'd, I I will have to check. But I I think it was the Allies bombing Eindhoven to try and dislodge the uh, the Germans that were stuck, oh, and that's why okay. they mentioned that they won't be um, you know they won't be uh, uh, you know cheering for us the next day because we've just bombed them again. Right. Okay. Again, don't quote me on that. If if someone knows better, please let us know. But I I, I think it's the Allies flying over on a bombing raid, mm-hmm. and that's what drowns it all out. Because the guy he sees um, the bloody tissue, and he's about to leave, but then uh, the girl knocks something and makes a noise, and he comes in, and then as the noise gets louder and louder and louder from these bombers, um, Bull kind of lunges out, and they have this little bayonet fight. Mm. Um, which again, it, it's pretty brutal. It kind of reminds me again of that bit out of Saving Private Ryan, with the um, not Steamboat Willie stabbing the uh, uh, the other guy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's pre- especially when he kind of like plunges the bayonet in, and the blood splatters on his face, yeah. and she, the girl, just kind of catches a look at him, and he's just got this look on his eyes. It's just like, oh wow, that's just. Don't want to run into him in a dark alley. <laughs> no, he's just a monster. Just absolute yeah. monster. But I do like their fight. It's it is clearly just improvisation. What what is to hand? What can we do? How can I use his weapon to to hurt the person in front of me? The bayonet and then the stock and just swinging guns at each other. Oh yeah, it's just they both know they're in a fight to the death right there and then, and. They need to sort it out quickly, and they need to do it now. And what better way than the sound is covered by these these planes going over? I I only presumed they were Germans going to bomb Eindhoven, but I, your your idea sounds more correct to me because of yeah, I I, what I, I just later I just on. don't yeah, I just don't think at that point of the war. The Germans were really in a position to mount a bombing raid somewhere. Mm. Um, so I, I, I think it was the Allies going because again, you still have German resistance throughout. You know, they haven't gotten rid of it, and I think the Allies were just trying to dislodge. Uh, plus, just historically speaking, um, it was RAF and American bombing largely destroyed the town, uh, which is why it was rebuilt in, after the war, and very little of the historic city still remains. Right. Okay. Cool. No, I didn't even think about that. I just naturally assumed. Bloody English again. Naturally assumed. Oh, it's, 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 it's to make an ass out of you and me, my friend. Oh, yes. Every, um, every single day. But uh, Absolutely. Yeah, brutal. But scene. yeah, you've got, yeah, you've got Bull kills the guy and then, you know, he kind of just drags him to hide him under the hay and the farmer tries to help, but Bull just kind of like just kicks him out effectively, just like, just go, mm. you know, leave it to me. Uh, and that girl just kind of looks at him like, you know, he's a monster. Um, fair play, you know. I mean, that's a pretty brutal thing to have to witness. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've also got, while this is going on, um, his squad. Well, it's it's Garnier and um, I think Shifty say they're going to go and look for him. But it's his squad say, no, we'll go. Yeah. Um, and Garnier goes, okay, off you go. Um, and yeah. we, what you see is Cobbs sitting there like going, I ain't going back. <laughs> yeah, do you and reckon then, um, Garnier was doing this to make his squad just think? You know, think about it. Just refresh no, their I don't minds think so. and say, because I, I think Garnier would have gone back in a heartbeat. I think Garnier was just going to go back. I, I think he was. You know, he's just going back. You know, that's what he's going to do. But when his squad said, "Dense," when he said, "Okay, you guys want to do this. You need to do this. That's fine. Mm. As long as someone's going back, that's you know." You know, that was the important thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, his squad 
go off to go and look for him and we see Cobb sitting there going like I ain't going back hmm. um, and then we come back to the next morning and um, it, it's pretty blase he's just like opening the door and he's just like oh it's a beautiful sunny day and there's no Germans here <laughs> yeah it's where have the Germans gone then are they just scarpered yeah, they've just moved on. You know, again, they're, they're not there to hold the territory, really. They're just there to disrupt the Allies' advance. Right. Um, which is what they've done. Uh, so they've moved on. And yeah, um, you know, he kind of comes out the next morning and he comes out and he finds Miller, or what's left of Miller, yep. um, and takes his dog tag just as a Jeep arrives uh, and does the whole kind of um, breakfast club, don't forget about me, salute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he heads back. Uh huh. He, he bumps into his um, squad as well. Yeah, they're kind of coming over a ridge. Well, they, they, during the night, you know, they kind of saw the Germans retreating or advancing or whatever they were doing, um, and let them go by. But this time, they see, they hear something coming, so they all crouch down, and then they see it's a jeep, and they come through, and um, uh, they see, um, you know, Bull sitting there, kind of like leaning out, like going, "What are you guys doing here?" Uh, and we see Cobb come with them. Because, you know, you didn't think I was going to leave you behind, did you, Sarge? You know? <laughs> and, and, yeah, you get a sense that, okay, now they've bonded. You know, now they're a unit. You know, now they're accepted. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they all, they all uh, get together. Get together and Garnier coming over. I don't know whether to... <laughs> what, what did he say? I don't know whether to shoot you, kiss you, or salute you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I love that dude. I really do. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, again, all of it, yeah. Get a little lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And so, Easy Company and the 501st. Uh, sorry, I don't know whether to slap you or kiss you. There you go. Yeah. They're, they're retreating now. It's official that they're pulling back. They, they've they got to go back to Eindhoven as well. Uh, Well, right. basically what this says is they've got to um, – Market Garden is, um, yeah, it, it's just a failure. Yeah. Um, it's not going ahead. Uh, and then you have um, Nixon and Winters talking and Winters saying, you know, I don't like retreating. And Nixon's like, it's first time for everything. And Winters remarks, like, how did the other divisions fare up north? And Nixon tells them that we're going to have to find another way into Germany. You know, which is kind of just establishes that this has not worked. Um, I'm not actually sure if the Allies pulled out of uh, Holland at this point or if they just didn't advance any further. Um, not entirely sure there. But yeah, you, you get the impression that, look, this has just not worked. We've got to try something else. And it's it's kind, it's kind of on a high because they've gotten ball back, but it's on a low because they failed their mission. Yeah. And you just got this shot of, like, all this wrecked material, um, you know, just being pushed to the side of the road, and uh, they're just walking back, you know, so... Well, I think it's summed up by pushing that uh, truck into the yeah. ditch, isn't it? It's just failed. Okay, forget about that. Move that along, and then let's let's start again or carry on somewhere else. I know the um, the airborne uh, the casualty projection before um, Market Garden. It, the casualty projection was about thirty percent. What they really hit was around about fifty percent. Oh wow! That's... Yeah, I mean the the, uh, the British got a proper pasted. Yeah. Um, I think it was yeah uh, at Arnhem, uh, the first airborne lost nearly eight thousand men. Wow. Yeah. Easy Company lost one hundred and eighty, um, and the uh, five uh, yeah the US. Yeah, 101st, 750 killed, 2,000 injured. But yeah, the British took the bulk of the um, the losses, but because it was kind of British-led, they were kind of at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but this this was uh, this was a bit of a clusterfuck. Yeah, wow. I mean, if, if this was Normandy, the war would have been drastically different. You know, it potentially, I mean, Germany wouldn't have won because whatever your alternate history and conspiracy theories say, it was not possible for them to win. Yeah. But it certainly could have dragged on the war a long way and probably would have resulted in a couple of nuclear bombs being dropped on Berlin. Wow, oh, flipping hell. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to think so, about uh, that. 
don't want to think yeah. about that. But yeah, it's a, so yeah, I mean, again, this kind of just shows that Normandy going well was a real big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it it's scary to think about. It really is. And when you do think about these other um, ways that the war could have gone, it, it really does get you thinking. But it also, OK, I'll accept what we have now. I'll take... I'll take the win how we are at the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, basically, that is the placements. Yeah. That's it. It's all done. Kind of touched upon everything there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, all in all, I I enjoy it. I think this is a good episode. I, I prefer this over last week's episode anyway. Yeah, I think it's got a... It's got a good story to it. This one, it's got a, it's got a good, it's a much more cohesive story because again, you know, last week's episode just kind of that weird non-ending when he gets, you know, he finds his courage and then he gets shot and then he's in the hospital and mm. you know, and all, and all that. And again, I, I st- even though he's in episodes one and two, you just don't know Blythe, but we know Bull. We've seen him before. We've interacted with him. He stood out, and you know, this was a real chance to get to know him. Yeah, and again, get a sense of you know, he's he's a good man respected and liked within the company um so yeah but uh and aside from that again it's just i think it's just a good episode and it's nice to see they're not invincible it's nice to see the vulnerability there yeah yeah definitely yeah i i like the randleman story that goes on in this so yeah it's i i i find it hard because I, I think i could say this is my favorite episode every single episode that we do <laughs> yeah it's, it's the it's the best it's, it's your favorite one you've watched this week it is yes it, <laughs> it's it's a step up from last week but I, I feel every week is still a step up i think they're all just brilliant you say that i still i still think day of days I, I don't think this is as good as day of days right because i still hold I think there was better episodes. I don't think Day of Days is the best episode of Band of Brothers. No. But I think I definitely think this was better than episode one and episode three. I just think it's a different character. I I feel mm-hmm. with episode one, I think it's a great introduction. I think this is a totally different character. So I, I, it's got its own merits as well. It's got oh, its own, own yeah. action and it's got... It's still got the character development that you have there as well, so I, I think it just wins all the way through. So, as as much as I don't want to put them in uh, like a chart of what's my favorite and what's my least favorite, it's it's still still a bloody good episode. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. It's damn good stuff, sir. It's damn yeah. good stuff. Okay, so we have a little bit of feedback. Um, there is one on the Facebook group if you want to grab that while I read off. What sure, the... I will go and find on the Book of Fizz. Okay, right. We do have an email, as ever, from Doreen Kelly. Hello, Doreen. And she says, uh, hi, everyone. Well, replacements was a bit of a change of pace, wasn't it? Elton and Andy were right about the gang mentality about who was at Normandy and who wasn't. However, it was telling that everything changed when they were deployed. The drop went a lot better this time and looks really peaceful with all of them dropping out the sky. They got a hero's welcome, but had to witness the harsh realities of the reprisals of the perceived uh, collaboration. Uh, collaboration. And, it, and then at the end, the town was in flames. The realities of killing were shown in extremely personal ways in this one. Thanks. Yeah, might as well just read that out at the beginning and have done with it. I yeah, feel. it's true. We could have had an early night. I could have gone back to Mass Effect. God. Oh, yeah, you were playing that, aren't you? <laughs> By the right way, now, I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, quickly, how is it? Uh, I, I'm enjoying it so far, to be honest. Um, it's too early for me to kind of give any definitive responses, but yeah, I, I, a lot of people have been kind of very down on it, and I don't see that as yet. Okay. So. Good. Yes. Good. Excellent. Band of Brothers and Mass Effect reviews. There you go. What more can you want? They go together like, you know, peaches and bananas. Um, anyway, uh, we have more feedback uh, from Donna Lumsden yep. on the Facebook group. 
which you can all find at uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash band of brothers podcast i think so something like that just type in band of brothers podcast and it'll pop up yeah anyway and she writes just been watching replacements initial thoughts rather random and in no particular order which is how we like them uh, easy company first defeat slash retreat Garnier and Heffron, knowing how strong that friendship became watching the initial interactions, even though only portrayed by actors, is a real privilege. Uh, Robin Lang, Scottish actor with amazing South Philly accent as Heffron. Uh, Plethora of post-Band of Brothers acclaimed actors continues with James McAvoy, pre-Shameless as Private Miller. Sobel with a motorcycle, how much does that echo? Uh, echo of a can of peaches episode. But his power is now gone. It's an excellent <laughs> point, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And <laughs> anyway, let me just finish this. And uh, unnamed tank sergeant with a what ho ridiculous British accent. Really? <laughs> what, what do you mean ridiculous? We all sound like that, don't we? How dare yes. you, sir? How, How dare, dare you? I said good day to you. I said good day, sir. <laughs> nope, nope. Good day. Good day, sir. Yes, it's 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 true. The, the whole can of peaches thing. But now he's he's got no power. He's got yeah. Yeah, I feel if he could have picked it up and held it like the can of peaches, he would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, I don't see a motorcycle in my hand. I see contraband. Yes. And I'm going to make you run out that hill, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fly you all the way back to Georgia just to make you run up that mountain again. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll drop you off at the bottom, feed you spaghetti or just noodles and ketchup. Yes. And then make you run out there again. In your whiteies, your tidy whiteies. <laughs> Who uh, misses? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is replacements done then. That is indeed replacements, yes. Next week we have, or next time out, we have Crossroads. Yep. I'm struggling to remember this one. It's, it's one that I don't really remember. I know there's shots and there's a very famous scene from Band of Brothers in this. Mm-hmm. But apart from that, I cannot remember it. Yeah, uh, again, I, I like you. I, I, I definitely remember the th- this. This I seem to recall is a. Um, uh, it's one of those letters where the, the the protagonist is writing a letter, reminiscing about events. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of how it's portrayed, which is great. You know, it, and it works. Um, and yeah, it's it's got that scene with um, Winters, which is iconic for a band of brothers. But outside of that, don't remember a huge amount of it. But it's focused on winters, and every episode of winters is awesome. So I love it. <laughs> Good. Okay, cool. Well, next time out, yeah, please join us for that. It'll be in a couple of weeks' time. But if you want to get some feedback in for that, please drop it along to rogue2media at gmail.com, or you can leave it on the Facebook group, which we've mentioned before. If you just type in Band of Brothers Podcast in the search bar, it will pop up, so you can leave your leave your feedback there if you wish for us to uh, ruin it for you on this show. Uh, but until then, um, Andy, would you like to plug away on anything that you do? Oh yes, uh, you know, as well as this, you can find myself and Mister McManus doing the Grand Prix podcast, of which the first race uh, is the day this comes out, I believe. Oh yes, god damn it, it is. Yes, it is, isn't it? Oh yeah, and and. Yeah, like a pair of junkies without a good fix, we have been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I have been, how the kids say, I've been jonesing for this. Oh, so much, so, so much. But put it this way, a couple of weeks ago, I had I had to, you know, force Elton to do a podcast about it. I suspect next time out, I'm going to have to hold him back. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you did make me do that as well, didn't you? <laughs> I did. But but it, it worked out in the end, so there you go. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, aside from that, you can also catch me on Space Doc Jury with uh, Miss Lee Metcalf and the Reverend Peter Organ, where we have a civilized and cultural discussion about the merits of various forms of spacecraft, and we totally don't argue over fictional numbers that we made up ourselves. Sweet. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed the last two episodes as well. I had to oh. I had to binge them this time. Oh, was that the uh, was that the aliens one? It was the Aliens did, did, one and the one with Anne-Marie on there as well. Okay. Did you have to double dip the clutch at all? <sighs> yeah, nearly did. Nearly did. <laughs> what did I, get? I got blamed for something on there as well by Anne-Marie. I can't remember what I got blamed for. 
Oh, oh I, I, I'm, I'm sure it was well deserved. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's just me trolling again, isn't it? Oh yeah. yes. Um, if you, I have set up something in iTunes as well, which is is quite nice. The, thank you to the people over at iTunes I've been uh, chatting to. Uh, if you pop along to iTunes and just type in the search bar "Rogue Two Media," then you will be presented with all the podcasts that I have done in the past. So you have. Uh, Shonky Lab, you have Grand Prix Podcast, you have the Band of Brothers Podcast, you have the X-Files Podcast, you have the Rethinking Lost and Apotheosis of a Bombast, and I think that's it so far. So that's not too bad. So if you are enjoying podcasts, please pop along there and check that out. Please also check out the Black Dog Podcast and Space.Juria, as Andy has already just said, and Hypnobobs as well. Please check that out. Is there anything else I'm missing? I'm sure there is. Uh, I think Witless for the Defence is coming possibly. back soon, so please check that yes. out. Yes. Are, are, are you going to be once more upon the, uh, the bench, sir? I, I will be. Um, I don't know what film we're doing, but I will be there. Don't worry. <laughs> I will be there. Uh, so that that will be coming back soon. Um, I, off the top of my head, that's all I can think of. And uh, LSG Media as well, which are friends with us over here. So please check out all of their podcasts as well. They are super and great. And let them know that we sent you over there. So there we go. Until next time. Oh, hang on. What's it called? Crossroads. 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 Yeah, we'll see you next time for Crossroads. So thank you very much and goodbye. See you Brothers podcast. I'm Elton, and joining me as always is Mr. Andy Placides. Hello, Mr. McManus. How are you? I'm not bad. Yourself? Uh, yeah. As you know, in the green room, uh, very stressed. But you know, apart from that, yeah, wicked man. <laughs> On the plus side, you're not about to drop into uh, the Netherlands, so I, I think you know. On the whole, it's not too bad. Any other day, apart from 1944, would have been a pretty good day to drop into the Netherlands. I, I can't see any reason I, not I, to I, go there. To, to, to be fair, I think 1941 through 43, you probably want to avoid it as well. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe <laughs> 1960s onwards. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that, that would have just raised a lot of confused questions from people. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 well, it, it's generally just to get off my mash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But you know, yeah. oh, okay. I'm gonna to have to just resist the urge to do really bad gold member impressions now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there they could have been a few during this episode, I suppose. Oh, yeah. it's it, it, the day is still early, there might as well still be. <laughs> yeah, well, we are here to talk about replacements part four of Band of Brothers. And... If we'd have thought about this, if yeah. we'd have thought about this cleverly, we should have had two other people do this cast for us. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, oh well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. That would have been easier as well. It would have been. We, we wouldn't have had done it then. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Damn, maybe next time round we'll, we'll do yes, that. Yes, yes, in, in, in 10 years' time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, let's get into it. Uh, first impressions of, of this episode that you have of replacements. How did you find uh, it again this time? Well, again, just... The last episode kind of ends just before this. But then this kind of does the same ending slightly differently because the replacements are in the very end of the last episode. Yeah. But and they're kind of introduced then. But then they're kind of reintroduced at the beginning of this episode. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a bit like, um, you, know, you know, they ended it and then they're redoing it, doing a do over. Yeah, It's like previously on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, previously on, but they used a different take from what was on the screen. It's just like I kind of remember this happening differently. Yeah, it's like seeing the the nowadays when you get the well, it used to happen all the time anyway. But the trailers where you get sucked in and think, "Hang on, 
that it wasn't from that angle. It was from a different angle. I want to see yes. that angle. I want to see the trailer angle. What the hell? So yeah, I bit like bit like Rogue One. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, and all the other films that I've seen that really just wipe me <laughs> out. It just bugs me. It's always bugged me. Always has. Um, one thing I did want to touch on just before we go into it as well. Yes. Blythe. Now we Blythe. said that I I didn't see him in the first two episodes, and we had the whole episode about him last week or last yeah. time out. Episode three, yes. Yeah. Uh, Karen Tan, wasn't it? But you go into the IMDb. He's clearly in there somewhere. Oh yeah, he's in there, uh, and, and we know he's mentioned. It's just this comes back to what I said last time. They don't focus. We we, we just don't see him. He's just lost. Mm. I mean, it, it's a bit like you know Malarkey and Garnier and Buck and um, Bull, and, and you know all these other characters. You know, um, Shifty. You've had a minute with them to kind of know who they are and get a sense of them. Mm. Whereas Blythe is just like, yeah, just don't remember him it's, at all it's just not really recognized is it it's it's yeah. such a shame mm-hmm. but there we it go. might it might it might well have been a film stuff and it just isn't in the final cut uh or it might be that he is just so bland that we just never realized <laughs> <laughs> it could be a, a bit of a hand from a and a hand from b i suppose a little column a a little column b <laughs> yeah, yeah why not left out in the trailer again poor old blythe Oh well. Anyway, uh, should we get on with uh, replacements then? Let us let us do this thing. Okay. Well, this is all about. It centers centers around Operation Market Garden. Oh yes. Which is where it was. the The operation in uh, Normandy went so well they decided to do it again over in Holland. Yeah. Now, um, if, if I'm if I'm saying this incorrectly, then you know, please let me know. By the way, I'm not a military expert, so you can't email in and have a go at me about that. So there we go. Well, I wasn't going to email in anyway. I I just yell at you down the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is Operation Market Garden. Um, uh-huh. This is about the para. Uh, Operation Market was the paratrooper side of things, wasn't it? Yeah, and then Operation Garden was the British tanks, etc., coming through. Yeah, then uh, the the paratroopers would take all the bridges, secure the bridges, which would let all the tanks through, and then they can get. It's basically their way to Berlin in the quickest route. And... They, they were effectively trying to do to Germany what Germany had done to France at the beginning of the war, which is you kind of bypass the more heavily defended border mm. by going up through Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, Operation Market was the airborne side of it, but uh, it wasn't just Americans. There was also the uh, British Airborne was involved in this as well. Um, and Operation Garden, as you say, was uh, kind of a tank mission. But yeah, the, the goal was here was to kind of bypass the uh, heavily defended German lines and to get across the Ruhr to give a, a good foothold into Germany. Mm. Uh, and as I mentioned before, is featured in the film A Bridge Too Far, uh, which is fantastic. It has like every Hollywood star from the 70s in it. Wow. Like literally everyone. <laughs> it's directed by Richard Attenborough as well. Oh, is it? It is. Really? Wow. Oh, yes. It's any, a, it's any a very penguins good film. in there? Uh, no, no, Richard, not David. Oh, okay, yeah. That's his. <laughs> any dinosaurs in there? <laughs> Quite possibly, yes. I mean, Edward Fox is in there. Does he count? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why Scott, not? It's, it's got Michael Caine in it. I mean, before we got into the episode, I always remembered enjoying this episode. Um, uh, Bull Randleman's uh, one of my favourite characters. You know, I've, I've always liked him. Um, you know, he's always chomping on a cigar and, you know, uh, cares for his men. So I've, I've always liked that aspect. Um, also, the film um, A Bridge Too Far is one of my favourite war films. And this is dealing with the same operation as that. So that's kind of interesting for me as well. Um, also, this has kind of got a lot of people. I mean, you've got James McAvoy in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought you had Paul Rudd from Ant-Man and Chris Barry from Red Dwarf in it. But it turns out it's not them. It's just people that look and sound exactly like them. So. Uh, I didn't think there was Paul Rudd in there, though. No. Oh, I thought, uh, I can't remember what the character's name is at the minute, but there's one guy and, you know, he just looks like Paul Rudd. And I know a lot of other people think this as well, because if you type in Paul Rudd Band of Brothers into Google, the other guy's picture pops up, because apparently a lot of people think it's him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I, 
I uh, I think the last time I watched Band of Brothers, my last time out, I noticed that uh, James McAvoy was in it. Oh yeah. So that was that was good, and I was expecting to see him this time round as well. So yeah, that was cool. That's I, I just love seeing these that generation of actors coming through. It's oh yeah, it's it's like the who's who of um, you know today's Hollywood A listers. Yeah, this day and <laughs> yeah, it's like the old Generation X as they were coming through, and then you'd see him in other stuff. And the, oh, hang on they're the movie stars of today and that's what's happening now we we can see the fast benders and the mcavoys mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't get to see them battling with that their powers this time round, which is a bit <laughs> of a shame but i don't know no that's a, another tangent that i don't want to go down I'm just <laughs> thinking of what mr x would be doing Mr. X, Mr. Mr. X, Professor, Professor X. He didn't spend seven years in X medical school for you to call him Mr. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. He's a Mr. to me at the moment. He's nobody at the moment. He's just a replacement. <laughs> he is just, just, just a replacement. What I do find is kind of weird with this episode is... I, I have, I've heard it's got Michael Caine and it's got um, a Sean Connery. Oh, yes. I, I, I believe it has Sean. It has... Uh, just about everyone who was in uh, British cinema in the 1960s. It's, uh, it's a most excellent film. Yeah. Make it, it has. Uh, submarine. No, no, it's no, it's no submarines, unfortunately. Although we are showing the film down on deck six by the big multiplex. <laughs> if you want to get this joke, you need to listen to the Black Dog podcast. Yes, definitely. And <laughs> listen to the Das Boot episode. That's where it's all explained. So yeah, don't listen to the. <laughs> Don't listen to the the hunt for Red October because it's not explained in there. Once you get to Das Boot, yes, then you'll understand that. <laughs> wow. Well, when we say understand, <laughs> you, you'll you'll get where it started. Understanding is a separate thing altogether. Yeah, that's that uh, that requires devotion and maybe at least four years worth of listening to us waffle on on the Black Dog and, and alcohol, lots of alcohol, lots <laughs> and time as yeah. well. It is. It, it, it might well be something that once we once we finish that little journey through um, the adventures of the 501st, we might go back and pull out a few films which kind of tie in. Because I know I want to do Fury at some point because yeah. that's a very good film. Um, a Bridge Too Far would be a great one. There's also uh, The Battle of Britain. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a couple. We, we might do a little spin off things afterwards, but let's get through Easy Company before we do that. Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, as you said, it, it's. It's like a previously on. Uh, they're in a bar. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, the intro. Intro. Ugh, nearly forgot the flipping intro again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was... Uh, did you recognise any faces in this one? Uh, I recognised uh, Randleman. Oh, okay, uh, it, yeah. It was one of the guys talking in this one. Uh, but I only recognised him because last week out, I'd looked up his uh, IMDb page and... Mm -hmm. There's a picture of how he looked. So I was like, oh, I know who that is. Um, but yeah, uh, they're talking about uh, their replacements. Not not their replacements, but how the people who'd been with the company since um, uh, Kyuhi and 